Hell yeah. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another film review. Tonight we're returning to the Blind Dead um, for the final instalment of the the quadrilogy of films from the Blind Dead and we're looking at Night of the Seagulls which is the last film in the Blind Dead series. And it's been a while since I've been to and watched the past three. I did review the other three uh, on my channel throughout last year. Um, and I've had a wonderful time watching them. So this was the very last instalment which I've really put in off. And putting off and putting off because I just don't want to watch it because I don't want it to end. This is absolutely daft, isn't it? Because I can watch them over and over again. Um, and this one, it, again, it, it's completely sort of different, but the same as the others. It's it's um, it, it's it's a wonderful story based on this sort of remote sort of fishing island, if you like, with this little fishing village with the the locals there. But before we get to meet them, we get casted back to the past, um, where we see, again, our Knights Templars living on this... They seem to have lived everywhere, um, but live in the same sort of place. And, again, they're doing their normal um, sort of um, sacrificing of women, uh, which they believed are uh, witchcraft or whatever it is. But they're sacrificing, and they've got this kind of statue in this one, a semi-like frog-looking statue, where they sacrifice the woman, and they cut out her heart, and they feed it to this statue. Um, and I don't know why. It's not told why they're doing it. They're not talking. Not only are they the blind dead, they're the silent dead. Uh, they're not talking at all. And then it cuts to modern day, and, and it's really not so modern. Um, it's very sort of 60s, 70s look to the film. And, and we see our our new doctor and his wife arrive into the island with their flared trousers and and their <laughs> and their uh, um, modern clothing. And so they just don't sort of fit in with the rest of the village. Um, and again, th this is... Um, a story a little bit like American Werewolf in London, where they're not welcome. Or, or The Wicker Man, where they're not welcome on this island. They're not wanted there. Because this island is set in its ways. It has its own sort of like beliefs, its own sort of um, folklore. And they don't really like outsiders. So they're shunned. They are shunned from day one. And nobody wants to talk to them, apart from one... Um, sort of disabled man who lives on the island who has like a speech impediment and a limp. He they take they take him in one night because they see him outside and he doesn't want to be left outside at night because of what's happened at night. <coughs> the former doctor leaves the island and he tells them to leave, don't stay here. But if they do stay there, do not go out at night and all these sort of things. All these sort of weird and wonderful things going on and night time falls and and the wife um as they're laying in bed uh, trying to sleep she hears like bells ringing and it's not monk's wood it's she hears bells ringing um like a, a church bell ringing and it spooks her right out because it's a strange time of night for them to hear it and then she hears this sort of wailing sort of singing going on um over the top of it and she's wondering what's going on so she goes to look out the window and sees uh, a, a sort of horde of people walking in black clothing apart from one um young woman in sort of long hair in a, in a white sort of like uh nightgown all walking down towards the beach and towards the stony rocks where they will tie her to the rocks and as this is happening we return to our Knights Templars graveyard, which is in all the other films, and we see the same clips. We see the same clips of the of the tombs opening and the creepy hands coming out of the tombs. And our Knight Templars are returning um, back from their ancient past, dead to a zombie-filled 
um, horse riding, um, blind, living, dead. And we're treated to a lot of the same sort of clips and highly, highly over-exaggerated sounds of horses who's clopping around on which sounds to be like um, wooden tables, but were treated to them as they make their way down to the beach to pick up their sacrifice. And our, our couple are very, very, very weary of what's going on in this village, and they're just not welcome there. They go to the the the, the, the wife goes to the to the local supermarket, if you want to call it that. To pick up some groceries but she gets ignored by the shopkeeper who serves everyone else behind her and ignoring her until one of the girls um i believe his name might be lucy um sticks up for her and gets her her groceries and says oh, i'll come and work for you i need to work and all this and so the wife starts talking to her about the ceremony that they saw the night before and the singing and the goals, the goals were, were sort of like yakety yakety above in the sky that night, which was strange because birds don't normally come out at night. And so she goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't hear anything. So she's in denial of things, but she goes to work for the doctor and his wife and helps them out. And the following night, they're at the house and uh, with their new maid and the disabled chap, they're both, the, and, and the doctor and I all in the house, and there's a knock on that door, and they open it, and there's a young sort of redhead girl comes in, all sort of scared and petrified and running away from something. She goes, please, they want to take me away, they want to take me here, please help me. So the doctor gives her some sedative medication, and then there's another knock on the door, and it's an old woman and a man from the village that come for the girl, the redhead girl. And they don't try and stop them or anything. So they take the redhead go away. And again, we see our horde possession of these people dressed in black as they take this redhead girl down to the rocky area on the beach for the next sacrifice. And again, we're treated by zombies on horseback, the blind dead on their horseback, going along the beach, with the waves and the sea splashing in the dog in in the horse's uh, feet, and it and it's a wonderful sight, although very very poor quality. You can imagine what it would look like today. You have to because the picture quality on this is 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 abysmal. And they grab their girl, and they take her off, still alive, back to their to their castle up on the hill, and they they tie her to the rock above their frog god if you like and once again they kill her and sort of feed upon her and give their the heart to the statue and the local crabs that earlier on came down to the first sacrifice are now coming down to to gnaw and chew on her gory dismembered body so what's going on? What, what, why are the blind dead on this island? Um, before they were in Spain, and then they were on the ship, and now they're on this island here. And they seem to, once again, be a part of this village's um, folklore and history. And the villagers are scared of them. And they're using all young girls. Where are they getting these young girls from to sacrifice? And our dead seem to be thriving. Um, so is our doctor going to fathom this out? Is him and his wife going to survive uh, the the uh, the the mystery and the and the the uh, uh, the extreme murder of the blind dead? Are they going to survive it through and carry on living on this island, or are they going to have enough and scurry away? Watch it and find out, because this is the very last um, film in the Blind Dead series, uh, Night of the Seagulls. And it's a wonderful film, really wonderful. It's not my favourite. Uh, it is a lot of people's favourite within this, within this sort of like uh, collection of, of wonderful films. 
it's not my favorite of them but it's still really really cool but i've got to say for being the, the last one in the series it's the worst looking one and um, the picture is dreadful on the transfer on this one it's very blurry it's very dark and there's a lot of dreamy camera work you know similar to um as you know the, um some of the other sort of like um dress to kill and all those sort of films have got this sort of dream like blur over the film and sometimes it's difficult to work out uh, the faces of of the zombies, which in the others was quite clear, and, and and it does lack the quality picture. I don't know if they ran out of budget, or they just couldn't um, remaster this in any stronger or better way than they did the other three. But it is the worst looking three, the worst, the last, the 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 worst looking one in the in the set of the uh, the blind dead. Um, but it doesn't mean it's the worst film, because the film is fantastic. It's probably my second favourite, to be honest, out of all of them that's in the set. To be honest, my, my favourite is still the very, very first one, Tombs of the Blind Dead. I think it's because it, is, it had such a charm to it, and, and it was my introduction to the Blind Dead, and I was absolutely taken uh, a rough by it, and it was fantastic. But this is probably my second favourite in the series. Um, so I can recommend it to you. It is really, really cool. The set of The Blind Dead is is well out of print. Um, so if you can pick it up, try to. But just shop around because it does go for some horrendously high prices. Um, because it is out of print. But it's definitely a series worth having if you're into your zombie films. Definitely. Or if you're into European horror and sort of old school, this is very old school. Is it? But it does have gore in it. It is quite gory. Like I say, you see, you, you get hearts being ripped out, and you know, and crabs eating the remains of bodies. So it it, it can be quite a a gore film if if you're not into any sort of blood, and it can be a little bit. Um, strange and eerie to a lot of people. A very uncomfortable watch. This was quite an uncomfortable watch because it was not because anything else, but it being rather eerie. It was really sort of eerie and um, played quite straight. And the fight, the thing I found really strange about this one is it's spoken in English, and the other the others are all in Spanish. And this one was in English, so that really threw me out. And it added an extra sort of like eeriness to the film. Because it's almost like, you know, wrong. It's wrong. Why is it in English? It should be Spanish. But yeah, it, it, and it was like really um, quite an eerie atmosphere throughout the whole sort of film. How these two are being shunned. Um, a bit like on Savage Island. You know, it's it's kind of like that, and uh, it's it it was really really cool and and a really enjoyable film and a completely different from all the others. Like I said, the first one was based in Spain in this sort of festival period, and 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 our zombies are tormenting them. And the second one is is a bit like a sequel, but then turns into a little bit like an Evil Dead film and a, a sort of like survival home invasion kind of a. Uh, um, one and the third one was based on like a galleon ship, and this one's based on an island. So they've all been completely different. And the only thing left in my box set to watch is my Amando uh, de Osorio documentary, um, which is a, a documentary from the director um, about the Blind Dead series, which I will get round to watch him because I am quite interested to find out. And then that is completely done amazing check it out if you get a chance if you can't check out some other horror channels check out horror hands horror geek man v film rs design pizzawell i am ice lord cat watches horror movies grumpy andrew's haunted house and a massive shout out to my lad till next time look after yourselves look after one another and i really hope i'll see you all soon